We went for a sail on the beautiful ocean surrounding Isla Mujeres, Mexico. Our engine began to overheat though, and we turned it off. We weren't making much headway under only sail against the strong current in this area. I think that we'll probably either visit Cancun or go back to Isla Mujeres. With our tails between our legs. Yeah, we can I sail. Know, I don't know for how long though before the wind dies. Exactly. The wind's supposed to be super light and only getting lighter. And the only thing that would give us wind is, the, you know, the usual afternoon squall. And if there's an afternoon squall, I don't want to be tiptoeing around reefs without an engine. Or with an engine that can overheat at any moment. Anyways, we're trying to keep the engine off for the moment trying to let it cool down and kind of poke around and see what's going on and our rudimentary temperature alarm alerted us to the heat exchanger getting hotter than normal so we checked the oil just check the oil mm -hmm. check the seawater strainer for debris Ew. Check that seawater was circulating. Check that the fresh water or coolant was circulating. You're adding a bit yeah. of, uh, what, what do you call that water? Fresh water. What's your observation with, with the more water going through it. Then the exit of the water is very hot and almost have seen the impeller is broken. Mm. And cringed at the thought that the impeller might be broken. Yeah, the smaller impeller. We were sent an ex extra impeller by our patron. If we have an extra impeller, it's just... Why would the impeller be breaking that quickly? We turned around because it was easier to go with the flow and to stop sailing only 1.5 knots against the strong current. In a more sheltered anchorage, we planned to open up the smaller water pump and to inspect the impeller situation. This is the current in our favor. We were fighting against two knots of current. Very reluctantly going back a couple miles. We're gonna maybe anchor in Cancun. We kind of wanted to see what was going on over there. Have a more look at the engine, a closer look at the engine. No, I don't like the Cancun anchorage. There's way too many jet skis. Not my cup of tea. Well, we can also anchor off of Isla Mujeres on the outside of it. Yeah, we can anchor. I'm gonna find a point for there. Even though Ravi hates losing ground, but I'm not sure what lot we lost. <laughs> we were just going for a sail. Oh, I forgot that we were still cooking with the solar cooker on the foredeck. Luckily, it was not very windy, and we didn't heal over more. But also, it was a little too calm. You're not happy with our attack now? No, not so happy. We were losing speed and losing control over our course. Yeah, it's pretty clear on Punta Cancun where the reef is. We're coming a little closer than we wanted to, then we would have. <laughs> it's okay, we're we're getting out of the current. There's quite a bit of current that kind of pushed us suddenly towards so shore. It's a bustling place even at low season. We can see from here, from our vantage point, very close up, we can see <laughs> all the tourists on the beach. We got pretty close to that point, a little closer than we wanted to. The anchorage looks good. Uh, it looks nice and calm and flat, but we're literally not gonna go there because there's jet skis going in circles. Like they're insane and they're just going in circles and circles. So we're not gonna anchor in Cancun. Robbie won, he didn't want to anchor in Cancun and now that we see it, it's for good reason that we should not go there. Yeah. <laughs> 
We snuck in close to the outer shoreline of Isla Mujeres, as close as possible, and just dumped the anchor into the water without any speed or finesse. I didn't like the way that we were anchored, so we tried it again. The engine tried its best to get us down today with its overheating and one last thing to check the impeller we're gonna see if maybe it's that if water is not getting through all the way through the engine throughout it cool it hopefully that's a reason for it to be overheating as opposed to the other option which would be that the gearbox is just done and if the gearbox is really done we we don't really have another option for fixing it we kind of fixed it in the only place that that was the best place to fix it back in Progresso. This is a beautiful anchorage on the outside of Isla Mujeres. We dropped anchor in some weeds and in the shallows and I didn't like that one bit so we picked up the anchor and sailed just a couple of meters out of the channel away from the island and just dropped the anchor under sail, full sail power and we just crunk, stopped full speed, three knots, three or four knots we were going, two sails up and swung around. I think the anchor is set really well here in the sand. We always anchor nicely here at Isla Mujeres because you never know what kind of weather is on the way. Here, on the outside of Isla, the Gulf Stream flows more freely than inside the protected anchorage, making the water crystal clear and inviting for a swim on these impossibly hot days, where we throw blankets over our huge pilot house windows to block out the sun. There was not much sea life to speak of though, other than these small baby fish looking for some protection up against our hull. They also hugged up against me as I looked around. There's that noise. This is the first time that I've caught it on camera. We mostly hear it at night through the hull. Did you catch it? What is that noise? It sounds to me like a Star Wars Imperial alarm. Which is based on some sort of steam siren, I think. We've been trying to figure out what the sound is. It's non-stop, every day, all day. Mostly we hear it at night. The only thing that we found around the boat here were two conch shells. One had a live conch inside. My first time seeing a live one. And another one with a hermit crab taking up residence. We didn't want to eat the creatures, particularly the conch, because they are few and far between. Instead, we would have banana bread today, cooked inside the solar cooker, as usual. Yeah, 
puffed up all the way to the top. After that meal, it felt right to prepare to pick up the anchor and to sail back to the most protected of anchorages to crack open our engine's water pump. Sailing off the anchor means unfurling our mainsail just before the anchor reaches the bow. We picked up a little speed and made one tack before raising the jib. And then we were off, but not very far. Just around the corner, up the busy channel filled with charter boats and ferries. How do you feel about this? It's buoy. What do you think about that tempo? After anchoring yesterday with both sails raised, we decided to try the maneuver again with only the main sail. But we didn't touch down exactly where we wanted to. So we simply raised the anchor and jib again and made a big old circle back towards the same spot. Zigzagging a little to avoid the traffic and then tried it again. This time anchoring under sail, we swung right onto our mark, exactly where we anchored before. Every time we have to work on the engine, it's like, is this the last time, is this the final straw? Okay, what do I need to open up? The... Just the pliers. We don't have to close any water or anything? No, just the water's gonna come out of it, we're gonna have to refill the water from the the fresh water. The fresh water, we have to leave. Should I leave the gasket on if possible? Yes. I peeked in and poked around, but decided that Robbie should remove the impeller just in case any stray pieces might get stuck or make their way into any of the tubing. And uh, if any of it broken, the engine overheats. It needs better water flow. Might have to get a bigger impeller pump going there. So another pump, maybe electrical to help along. We keep on threatening to do it. It's okay. more... It was exactly where it was not meant to be. <laughs> yeah. We knew we had it. Stuff. We had to take the whole boat apart to find the tiniest little impeller, <laughs> which was inside some random container. Yeah, we both knew it. it, we had it. We both had mental imaging that we ha had a spare one. Here it is. And hopefully, hopefully that's what was causing the engine to overheat. So that impeller lasted about a year. Now we have some lubricant that we dug out. I think that might be important to stopping. Here's one of the little arms of the last impeller. Lubricant, it's the... It's the impellers, the housings are better built now. That's an old housing, the, the new housing better. Where are you putting the lubricant? On the tips? On the tips and on the sides as well. I'm just going to hitting the whole thing. The engine, it's going to go, oh, wee. It's going to go, oh, wee. Does it slip in nicely with the lube? Yes. Because the little rubber gasket that comes with the, t the, the impeller kit 
doesn't fit, we're gonna have we're gonna continue using the bicycle tube made handmade gasket. Okay. I mean, paddles would last way longer if the fucking things were. Was a little bit less intense, intensely bending the arm. Yes. You've seen that water circulating in there? Yes. Thank you to our supporters. Our engine is back in business with a new impeller, hopefully without any problems overheating for at least another year. <laughs>